What's going on guys, it's Cliffy here and welcome into game 3 of the Champions Trophy. We've got an Ashes game here today, we had Trans-Tasman first episode, we've got the Ashes rivalry in episode 2. Today we're taking on England and barring an absolute nightmare from the Australians here, we will qualify for the semi-finals. So at the moment we are on 4 points, we beat Bangladesh in the last game, we obviously beat New Zealand in episode 1. Um, so I think our net run rate is very good from that Bangladesh game as well. Well, because we did win that one by about 200 runs. I'll get to that a little bit later on in the episode, but essentially we're on four. New Zealand are on four, but they've played all their games, um, and I think England are on four as well. So they've beaten Bangladesh, uh, and they beat... No. Are they on two? They must be on two. I don't know. Anyway, essentially a win will guarantee us a spot inside that... Well, a win would make us finish top. I can't get my words out today, and even a loss will probably still see us finish in second position. Now, uh, last game we took on the Bangladeshis, and what a performance, just an individual performance uh, by a few players in particular who I will mention in just a moment. But we scored about, we scored 300 plus, managed to roll them I think for about 99, so very happy with that. Um, Steve Smith outstanding once again uh, he scored a hundred and it came in very quick succession as well it came in very quick time so I'm very happy about that and uh, Kawaja actually chipped in as well he scored 50 in the last inning so he's in very good form too so we'll be hoping he can carry that in to the knockout stages Paddy Cummins with the ball was incredible, I must say. The Bangladeshis actually did get off to a very good start. I think they're about 1 for 62 uh, off their first 10 overs. So they were absolutely taking apart uh, Mitchell Stark and Josh Hazelwood. For some reason or another, those guys just could not get the job done. Pat Cummins comes in, takes 5 for 23, and just absolutely annihilates that middle to lower order of the Bangladeshis. And we were definitely happy with that because we needed a big performance. He's retained his spot in the side. Mitchell Stark has been arrested today. Uh, just more of a precaution than anything. It does also give Kunta Niall a run, who it is, it is his first run. Um, of the tournament. Matty Wade has come back from injury as well, but I think I'm going to stick with Benny McDermott in that keeper spot, at least for the time being, just because I feel as though he can do a very good job there. Um, not so much with the bat. I think Matty Wade probably is a better batter uh, than Benny McDermott, but McDermott's work behind the stumps is just outstanding. It has been all series, has been all tournament. He's been taking chances that have just you know, didn't really deserve to be taken, to be fair. And he has chipped in with a bat. He has only played two games, only batted in one of those innings, uh, and I think scored 17 off about 12. Came in at the back end of the inning, so he was just going out there trying to score some quick runs, and that is exactly what he did. So he's got a chance today. Stoinis obviously did well in game one. Hit himself, I think, 70-odd, uh, and saw us home. Hit the winning run, so I'm happy with that. Faulkner's just doing what Faulkner does, uh, batting at number six. Possibly after this tournament is done and dusted, we could look at bringing back uh, another out-and-out -out batsman because we are, I guess, probably a batsman short in this side just with the way we have lined up. Stoinis probably at number five uh, is a position too high for him at the moment. I think if he can be uh, consistent with the bat and consistently scoring runs in that top five, then there is a spot for him, and his bowling does just help that as well because it means we've got a guy in the top five. Uh, it means we can play that out and out better at six or we can possibly play possibly play Stoinis uh, a bit lower or another all-round option like we have gone with today in the form of James Faulkner. So it does leave uh, plenty to the imagination, which is good. Leaves plenty that you can tinker with if you do have a guy uh, like Stoinis or pop, uh, you know, possibly even Faulkner who can bat inside that top five who does offer you a little bit with the ball. And Stoinis does offer quite a bit with the ball as well. I think in the second 2020 international against India that was played the other day, um, he did actually manage... Oh, you're kidding. Put the mockers on him. Absolutely put the mockers on him. I think he was 1 for 20 off his 4 overs. So very economical in picking up wickets as well. We just really need someone to hang around with Kawaja at the moment. He's on. He's closing in on that 100. Um, Faulkner's in now. Again, this is another good chance for Stornis. He gets 32. Um, but as I said, to be batting in that top 5, he really needs to be getting scores of substance 
um, and kicking on in a situation like this because we are playing on a very good batting pitch. Um, so runs are a plenty, and we are going to need all of them to help against a pretty strong England lineup. It must be said. Um, but the bowlers just aren't really getting the job done for them today at present. So um, we just need to keep going. Faulkner, good opportunity for him. As I said, him and Stoinis kind of fighting it out, I guess, for that number six role. Um, a lot of people might say bring in Hilton Cartwright. I think in 26, the 2016 version of this game, he was a solid, solid batter. A lot of people using him at number three, um, just basically as a pure batsman. So that might be something that we tinker with uh, a little bit along the way as well. And I believe Kawaja is going to raise, we should have raised his bat to be fair, because I think he has actually gone and picked himself up the 100. If not, he's going to do it here now. Possibly, I was going to say, possibly they don't do it um, when they do score 100 off a boundary. So, but that's all right. Um, Kawaj has gone and picked himself up 100, which is good because we could potentially change some things around um, in that top four as well. Obviously, Steve Smith is at three at the moment. Possibly could bump him down to number four. Chris Lynn, again, he's been getting good starts, but just hasn't had that innings of substance that I'm looking for, that innings um, that he really goes and kicks on and scores some big runs. So hopefully... Um, we can't obviously change anything for the tournament at the moment. Could look at bringing Aaron Finch back in. Uh, however, having not played a game in the group stages, a bit hard to come in in the semi-finals and just have to fire like that. In saying that, recently he sat out, I think, the first... What was it? The first three one-day internationals? And then came back in the fourth and scored a ton. Or possibly the third he came back and scored a ton. I'm not 100% sure. 50 for Faulkner as well, coming off just 32 deliveries. Um, so things are looking very ominous here for the English side. Looking as though we are going to be ramping up towards, uh, hopefully, that 380 mark. That could possibly make a big difference as well. As Kawaja has gone for 117 of 97. There's still 17 overs left. And we are starting to get a little bit low on the batting. This is a good opportunity, though, for Ben McDermott to really pl oh, I was gonna say, play himself in. And he's gone and got himself out ABW first ball. Bloody good keeper. Takes some bloody good chances. But with the bat, I know this is only his second innings, but still. We really needed him today to stick around. Because all this good work that it looks like has been done by Kawaja and the top order is looking like it is falling around us uh, quite considerably. As we said, we're looking at somewhere around that 380 originally. Now, probably, I mean, if we can get to 300 from here, I mean, we do only have two wickets left in the bag. We do still have Faulkner in, who hopefully is just going to farm the strike and try and keep it. Because, I mean, Patterson can bat, don't get me wrong, but... Really, we need Faulkner to be facing majority of these last few deliveries, and hopefully he can go and do that. I say last few. There's still 10 overs left to go after this. So still plenty of time, still plenty left in the tank, and Faulkner goes and brings up the 300 with a 6. So we got 300. We're past that milestone, um, which was, for a moment, looking a little bit shaky, and that is not going to help Faulkner. You're running out of partners down the other end, buddy, as you're closing in on that three-figure mark yourself. But hopefully Hazelwood can hang in. Faulkner needs 15 more runs to grab himself uh, that elusive century, which I think he already has one of. I'm pretty sure he scored 140-odd against India in a one day in India. I think that was one of the series that they had that runs were just at an absolute premium, like... 360 was par, which is crazy, and he has gone and got it. Came off, I believe, um, if my mess is correct, 60, 60 deliveries, 100 off 60 deliveries. There is six overs left to go, so we are going to be able to hopefully bat out these overs. Um, and it was looking, as I said, a little bit shaky there for a moment, but Faulkner has steadied the ship. He's kept us in. Hazelwood is 20 off 25. This is like when he was batting with Stoinis in the one day international at Eden Park against New Zealand where he's basically just blocking it out and Stoinis down the other end was just pumping it all around the ground and uh, rightly so Faulkner is going to carry his bat 121 not out of 72 deliveries with 16 fours and 5 sixes Australia get 343 is that going to be enough? Remember, no Mitchell Stark today. Kunta Nile is in the side, and that's not the best of start from you, son. You've been hit for back-to-back -back fours, and this batting track is very good. And the England side do have a very, 
Very good batting lineup looking at it now with Jason Roy down at number eight. So that is very surprising that he is down that low. Ben Stokes at seven, Morgan at six, Butler I believe at five. So there is plenty of batting in the side. Our bowlers are going to have to be at their brilliant best today. Yeah, Bairstow at four, Butler at five, Morgan at six, Stokes at seven, and Jason Roy at eight. So we are going to need some early inroads here, and I think we've actually gone and got one there, and that is the value of Benny McDermott behind the stumps. He is so, so good, and all those chances he takes. He just takes them when they are on offer. Not many extras go through him, hardly any drop catches. Um, so that is absolutely brilliant, and that is the perfect start that we wanted after England are getting off to a flyer. Constant wickets is going to be the key here, though, because otherwise it is going to be a very long day in the field. Lots of bowling changes. Paddy Cummins is in good form. We'll be hoping he can come in and do what he did against Bangladesh in the last game, just pick up those bulk wickets. And we are really going to need Faulkner and Stoinis here today. Really are going to need to probably get through some overs for us uh, and hopefully try and pick us up a wicket somewhere along the line just to break the partnership down. Because no spitter in the side. Um, so that is that option there done. And I think Cummins has actually gone and removed Hale. So that is good. We are now both openers back in the hut. But the damage possibly is already done. And Cummins is just on fire again, boys. And that is exactly what we want to see. He is just doing a spectacular job at the moment. He's removed uh, Hales and Root in the same over. Two very big players for England. And uh, now... This is good, just building this pressure up. That run rate was heading down towards 6. It is now back up at 7. Um, so we will take that. That I put the mockers on him again. Put the mockers on Benny McDermott, saying he doesn't drop anything, and he's just gone and dropped one there. So, um, oh, and that one there probably would have gone straight down first slip's throat. But the chances are coming, and he makes up for it with that one there. A great take down the leg side to get rid of Bairstow for 12 off 22 and McDermott has taken four catches already so there's a lot going on behind the stumps at the moment I'm going to bring back the first guys I'm going to bring back Kuntanai I'm going to bring back uh, Hazelwood and hopefully they can build some pressure possibly get us another wicket I'm trying to bide my time to using both Faulkner and Stoinis um, trying to save them I guess for as long as possible and build up as much pressure as possible just so England don't see it as a way out that they can go and try and score some quick runs. That there will do as well. Butler gone for 52. And uh, this could be the perfect opportunity actually to bring them in. I was going to say, if we got Ewan Morgan there as well with the thick outside edge, then we would be in absolute dreamland. So we've got to get five overs out of these guys somehow. So no point mucking around. Let's go and do it. Faulkner actually picks us up a wicket. So what a day he is having. 100 with the bat. And he's gone and picked up a wicket maiden in his first over. And we were talking about how good this England batting lineup was and how deep they go. I mean, Morgan and Roy still in. So they can definitely do some damage. And then I think Rashid, David Willey. So, I mean, those guys can bat too. So this game is definitely not over. There is definitely... Plenty left in this game to come. Don't get me wrong. There is still many twists and turns, but that there could be the telling blow. And Faulkner, what a day. As I said before, what a day he is having. He scored 100. He's picked up two very crucial wickets. And uh, Stoinis is even chipping in on the party now as well. So it is a party, and the Australians are absolutely loving it at the moment. So just got to try and, I guess, tie down David Willey. Um, try and keep Jason Roy off strike as much as possible uh, just so we can go and, I guess, just try and restrict this England side for as little as possible. Still in with a chance here. The run rate is only seven runs per over. And the way uh, these players have been going today, that is definitely not out of the question. I think that possibly is another catch that has gone down from Benny McDermott. So, um, yeah, so that's two in the game. As he, I talked him up big time. And that run rate has gone down to six now. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, England are still in with a chance in this game, especially with Roy and David Willey. I said he could bat. These two are finished. They have been expensive. But we've got the strike bowlers back now. And we do really need some wickets because that run rate has dropped down to about five and a half. And to, in all fairness... If we lose this game, I am not going to be happy. 
not going to be happy at all, especially after the runs we got on the board. We probably should have got a lot more, um, but Jason Roy is single-handedly from number eight winning this game for England. That's a big wicket there from Patterson to get Willie. So now there's just one left to go, and it is Mr. Mark Wood, who I'm hoping we can target and possibly try and pick up. And that is exactly what we have done. Paddy Cummins coming back. Australia win by 63 runs. Game was a lot closer than it does suggest there on paper. Faulkner with the man of the match effort with his 121 not out and 2 for 54. Pat Cummins picks up 9 wickets in the past 2 games. And as we can see on the league table here, boys, that does see Australia finish top. Knocks England the host out as well. And New Zealand are going to be going through to the semi-finals with us. And we will be taking on... Uh, well, we don't know yet. So that's very interesting. We'll see that in the next episode. Do hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, remember to give it a like. Give this video a thumbs up if you are new. Please do subscribe. And until next time, guys, ka kite anua. See you soon.